Hey, it's me, Scythe7, and welcome to part two of my walkthrough for Library of Runa. I've got some reading to do, because I completely forgot something. So, after you unlock key pages for characters, you can... You unlock these paragraphs about them, and I would like to read through them, because I am trying to catalog the game, in a sense. So, here's Lenny's page. Wanna hear a secret? This is kinda embarrassing, but I used to have a dream once, like Pete does now. Yeah, I know, I'm still younger than him with a long future ahead of me, but what could I do? Life's too rough for that. Others say that rats are a pathetic bunch who are too incompetent to join even the smallest syndicate, let alone a wing. Filthy losers who feed on junk and leftovers, not making any effort to change. Back when I was a young kid, I didn't like that. I thought I was better than those rats, so I decided to get into an examinee town. Little did I know that it'd be the one choice I'd regret the most. I begged and nagged at my parents, wanting to achieve that stupid dream. How'd it go, you ask? Seems you're just as stupid, aren't you? I wouldn't be hanging out with these folks if I made it, now would I? What I'm saying is, dreaming won't do jack shit for you. They didn't end up here because they gave up trying. Hell, they wouldn't have set foot on this better in the first place if they had what it takes to achieve their dreams. You get it now? Pete's a huge idiot. And Lenny's kind of a jerk, and I think he's like the youngest one out of all of them. Or at least it looks like it. Now I'll go through Mang Chi's page. Did you know? There's grades for each alley in the back streets. Funny, ain't it? Trash in a trash can are grading each other. The parts the parts that are under the protection of a syndicate, office, or association are pretty safe. Sweepers can't raid those streets easily, putting the people who live there in a different grade from those who don't, though. It's pointless, honestly speaking. Sure, it's a bit safer over there, but we're talking about the back streets, get it? You know what's funnier? Even kids would grow, would group themselves according to what part of the streets they live in. They'd even shun the others whose clothes or manner didn't fit their turf style. I had no choice but to accept the sad truth. So back streets have like clicks, is kind of what he's saying. You're wondering how things were in the alleys I lived? Couldn't afford to pay protection fees to a syndicate, so the sweepers came down at night and collected most of my neighbors. I had to witness them take chunks of flesh out of my parents and brothers while they were still breathing. Don't pity me though, my story ain't nothing special around here. And it's crazy how the people in the back streets just kind of accept how bad everything is. Now here's Pete. It's not a lot of peeps who hang around in the back streets alone, it's cause that's just madness. Weak and dowdy folks gotta band together to survive. Get into a small syndicate or anything and make a living somehow. Some ignorant fool makes a scene in the back streets on their own, they're just making themselves a target as soon as others notice they're alone. That's why we move in groups. We're called rats for a reason. We crawl about the dark in packs and jump at prey for the chance to bite them apart when we spot one. Do you wondering if we rats have any dreams? Hmm. I guess belonging to a proper syndicate, if any. We're just too tacky and amateurish to be called one. We hate being bound to rules, so hell will freeze over before one of us joins an office. And no rat I know would move to an examinee town and study for wing entrance exams. Those nerds at examinee towns ain't too different from rats like us. We're all dreaming silly dreams that'll never come true with our petty skills. An office, a wing, a syndicate, or whatever, Thinks it's an easy task to belong to a decent group. People just accept what they got and live on, but still, I wanted to have a dream. It's even like these these guests are kind of interesting. They tell an additional story and it kind of sets the tone of how the city operates. Now we've got Eden's office. The Society of Fixers is built entirely up on meritocracy. The greater you are, the higher you can climb. On the other hand, if you don't have the capability, you should be thankful for any org that accepts you and stay low 
thing is, capability can mean many things. For some, it could be physical strength, and others might have superior intellect. It seems kind of unfair to me that they make arbitrary valuations of a concept that can be taken in so many different ways. Not that I think I have some hidden talent that deserves a better grade or anything, though. I do feel a bit upset, but I think I'm at the right place. The jobs I usually do are looking for lost cats at night. You can tell how low my spot is, yeah? Not a huge fan of the jobs I'm doing right now, of course. I mean, sure. I won't say no to some flashier request and just accept it to carry on with my life. Now, Finn. Uh, give me one second, I'll get a drink. This is called Library of Runo because there's so much reading, right? It's been a while, sis. Actually, I talked to you some time ago by myself, of course. It sounds a bit lonely, but I'm fine. Today's not going to be the same as the days before. I have good news. I finally joined an office run by this gay named Yoon and officially became a fixer. We're proud to see your precious little younger brother grow up and make it, aren't you? Isn't it cool? I told you there's no need to worry about me. Oh, about Yoon's office. I think it's a really nice place. No, I'm not lying. Operator Yoon is a bit cold, but he teaches me a lot of things, and there's also Eri, who's my senior. I've yet to be friends with her, but she seems like a good person too. For now, they're giving me small jobs like searching for lost cats. Maybe they're worried I'm too inexperienced to handle tougher stuff. It's not really fancy, but... If I start out with small tasks like this and work up slowly, I'm going to be a great fixer one day, yeah? My heart is already pumping with excitement. I'm becoming a proud and dashing fixer. I'll buy a nest migration ticket and get a nice new home for you. I could buy my gear at a workshop thanks to your help and all that, though so that's not all. You always looked after me, sis. It's kind of embarrassing to talk about this. Anyway, don't worry about me and do the things you want to do. I know you are always too busy caring for me to pursue your own interests. You offered to give me a prosthetic body or even a minor procedure the last time we met, but I'm doing fine without any of that stuff. And you got money to earn for yourself. Oh, it sounds like he's stretching. I'm tired, so I'll be going now. I ran around the whole town chasing a cat all day. Night sis, I hope we see each other again. Whoops. He's a book now. Now, Aries page. You have lots of things to prepare before you can jump into the fixer business. Starting with choosing equipment, you'll need clothes to protect your bodily accessories, etc. But before any of that, body augmentation comes first. There's no point having masterful skills or fancy equipment if your body can't keep up, you know? And training hard isn't going to do it. There's a limit to training your body, and the fittest body is still no match for mechanical prosthetics or bionic organs. You gotta be able to keep your body intact to do anything, so you're pretty much forced to spend a fortune on it. There's a ton of methods to enhance your body. Exoskeletons, bionic surgeries, nano tattoos, prosthetic body parts, you name it. Deciding what workshop tech to employ is up to preference and purpose. Some would want insane muscular strength that could let them carry a power pole one-handed, and others would want ludicrous speed quick enough to skip over multiple blocks in a split second. It's so diverse I could go on forever. You need any, any ability? They've got you covered. The only hurdle is money. In this city, money is what gets you power. That's why the first thing we notice when we assess our foes is how much they've spent on their bodies. Of course, some technologies patented by closed groups like certain syndicates or wings are hard to get your hands on, even if you have all the cash in the world. Just look at me though. It took a teensy little procedure for me to lift this humongous weapon with one hand. This is the kind of power you can get, you see. Body augmentation is more of a necessity than an option these days, so you want to study up on that. You don't want to stay a weakling when everyone else is getting their augmentations, now do you? They're probably not. Now, Yoon's page. Finn was bungling in many ways. He had no talent. He refused to take modification procedures. 
All he armed himself with was a tiny weapon. I didn't exactly dislike him though. They say a delicate person like him is nothing short of a pathetic here, but he had passion regardless and he was going to be our colleague from now on. Besides, it's not too common to see such a passionate fellow in this grueling mess of a city. He was an interesting one. Then why did I exploit him? Exploit is a rather harsh word to describe it if you ask me. What? That's like the perfect word. A sloppy kid like him would have gotten killed anyway, abducted in the back streets and fading away while witnessing his innards getting ripped from his body. And that's one of the tamer examples I could give. In this city, worse things are happening here and there on a daily basis. If he didn't die there, he could have faced a much more terrible fate somewhere else. Isn't that right? Never mind, this is all but rationalization. Think what you want. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. He's just kind of trying to preserve his own self-image. I don't think we need to burn any books. We'll go on with the invitation. This is why I left the voices on, because of these, like, they have different kind of mechanical sounding uh, voice. You guys should regularly refill your head with brain fluid. A dry brain dulls your thoughts. I, I knew I've been feeling so hazy these days. Where are we going to rob this time? I, I think we should go for a workshop. W workshops are rich, and they have useful components too. What about an office? We, we should earn some infamy if we take down an office or two. I don't think we'll get anything valuable from the offices we can take on right now. A restaurant then. I like delicious stuff. You moron. Did you already forget what we got our new bodies? Because we want to focus on earning without having to worry about food or sickness. That's right. Earning during like crazy. These bodies just need brain fluid, fuel, and some repairs from time to time. We can make money without feeling hungry or thirsty. Yep, they have to fill their brain juice. That's true. It costs the fortune to get ourselves whole body replacements. But it's so uncomfortable. I know I don't have to eat anymore, but I keep thinking about all the tasty things I had before, and it makes me want to taste them again. That's because we got cheap bodies from a cheap workshop. We just have to earn more, then we can replace our bodies with better ones. The most expensive ones can even adjust emotions and completely shut off desires, on top of having good performance. But those are almost as expensive as a nest household. We can worry about that later. Let's focus on money making now. It's all about money in the end. So don't bring up restaurants. You're making me want to eat stuff too. Mo? This piece of paper stuck in your body. I like how this body doesn't have any sensory system, but it's annoying to be unable to feel things like this. Let's have a look at that piece of paper first. I don't think it was in your body until just now. We got too infamous and someone sent us a calling card or something. Or maybe a coupon for yummy new food. All syndicates composed of such half-witted individuals? I was expecting someone more refined. It all depends on the syndicate. The city is crowded with them. You can even say there's one or every fixer out there. A number of thugs gather up and do things under a name and you get a syndicate. They're involved in all sorts of different businesses, so it's hard to give a general description beyond that. Seems sloppy. Are those machines? They aren't machines or AI, despite their appearance. Their machines, carrying their own emotions and desires, have long since disappeared from the city. 
These guys are just using whole body replacements and low quality ones from a shoddy workshop at that. I see. Alright, shall we prepare for the reception? Hell yeah, we should. So we can find valuable stuff here, right? You just have to chop up some monsters and take some books. This body has strength, if nothing else. We came here for a loot, but what if that piece of paper was all a lie? Maybe we were too naive. There's no need to worry, dear guests. In this place, we strictly play by the rules written on the invitation. Yikes! Welcome, dear guest. This is the library. I am Angela, the director and librarian of my role's namesake. In this library, you may obtain the books listed on the invitation, if you overcome the ordeal, that is. Must be one of those poised by rich folks. It's all entertainment to them. I heard of that. They kidnap people from the back streets, trap them in a labyrinth no one can escape, make them wander in there fighting for eternity. Until they die, never to see light again. We've already come this far, we have to do this. Don't be so gloomy. Can you find your book in this place then? So now that we have another floor, we can choose between them. And every reception, you, you'll have like a number of floors you can, you'll actually be able to use. So say these people die, since I have two floors available, I can then use this floor to hopefully finish them off. But I probably won't need to do that. These guys aren't that tough. Anything our metallic bodies are stronger than your soft flesh? This goes well, maybe we can move over to a better body, right? My body is harder than yours, don't you see? All those rolls were the same. It's crazy. Actually, I can redirect that and I'll probably get a stagger on him. I think this is better. Yep, there's a stagger and some damage. Yep, so you can see that evade dice rolled, and then since it's one against a an offensive dice, it got re-rolled. So if I'm lucky here, I can get actually I use it here. Since this is all offensive dice. If this wins, it should negate all of that and deal damage. We'll do that for fun, just kind of showcase it. Yep, win, win, win. And it looks really cool. And the music changed. A lot more fast paced. I'm so close to being dead. I think I'll go ahead and finish off this one though. It's cold, this feels lonely. Hopefully this wins. Yep, there we go. 
Good old uppercut. Oh yeah, I haven't been using the battle symbols. I'll need to do that after this. See, it's not a good idea to keep your brain inside a hunk of scrap metal. Isn't it still better than a frail human body though? There are plenty of ways to enhance your body without replacing it for another. Heck, there's actually many options. Tattoos, prosthetic limbs, medications and drugs, you name it. It's all possible as long as you have the cash. Replacing your body with a machine, on the other hand, is a one-way ticket you can't ever go back on. Robotic bodies cannot resemble humans too closely, even if it's for someone swapping out their flesh. Your life goes down the drain right away. When does one put their brain in a machine, then? One, when you urgently need a huge amount of money, you can sell off your old body and organs for a good chunk of cash. And that's crazy. Two, when you need to do repetitive work for a long time, I heard mechanical bodies like that aren't bad for that kind of labor. Broken parts can be quickly replaced, and desires can be kept under control, so it has its merits. Repetitive work for a long time. Oh, she doesn't like hearing that. That's what she did. What, interested in getting a new body? No, I was just reminded of my past for a moment. Oh yeah, she was. So now we have this. Let's go ahead and do battle symbols. So battle symbols, this is just... How you how you gain them, and then this is what they do. They do. Jeez. And then if you click the eyes down here, you can keep the effect essentially, but not have the appearance show. I don't remember who Malketh fights here. Let me try it. Oh no, I know what it is. It's a uh, fourth match. Or it's Scorch Girl, yeah. Okay, let me re equip her. We'll give her Yoon's page. So I could burn. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and burn these. These cards aren't very good. These are okay, and Deer's okay. So I guess I'll go ahead and read those. Oops. Starting with Arnold's. The city consists of 25 nests and 25 districts of the back street that surround those nests. And Callus office and syndicates reside in the back streets. You know what's a surefire way for a syndicate to make a name for itself among all the competitors? The simplest method is office raiding. Literally storm into an office and wreak havoc on it. You never know who will be the winner until you fight, it could stop at a good beating and one side surrendering. But some syndicates raid offices out of pure boredom and kill everyone. Each syndicate has its own way of operation. It goes without saying that the syndicate has more fame to gain out of raiding a high grade office filled with seasoned fixers. So the offices have to stay sharp at all times, you also have to watch it. If you misjudge your opponent, you'll end up dead before you could try anything. Consta. What's your favorite food? That's the question I used to ask the most when I still had a human body. I love, love eating. Talking about food was a huge delight for me. We would share each other's tastes and preferences and sometimes head to a restaurant for a meal just like that. 
But now, my body's a machine, as you can see. I can't taste anything anymore. Thanks for pointing that out. Mo told me to stop dreaming about it. I still want to try more delicious foods, though. Hot and flavorful. Spicy and sweet. Stuff like that. I guess this body is too cheap to restrain a delusional thoughts like this. If we get more money and change our bodies to new ones, then maybe I'll be able to stop these thoughts from getting in the way of my work. I love spicy food. I actually put, like, ghost pepper flakes on pretty much everything. It's just so good. Now, Mo's page. I frankly don't recommend replacing your entire body with a machine, especially with a cheap one. Aside from basic issues such as vulnerability to damage and creaking noises, cheap prosthetic bodies compromise too much. You're basically giving up all the joys of life. Can you imagine? You can't taste anything when you eat delicious food, and you can't feel the softness and coziness of a good bed. You can't feel anything get stuck in your body, be it a piece of paper or a knife. The head remembers those feelings, but you can't experience them again. There are ways to overcome it though. You can buy a desire stimulation chip and plug it in your brain, inject medications, or use other methods. They're just absurdly expensive. You're better off saving up for a more expensive prosthetic body if you really want your senses back. High quality, pricey bodies come with sensory organs. As I always say, it's all about money in this world. Hell yeah it is. Now, should I change this deck with anything that I picked up? YOLO! This is a pretty good card. Gaining strength. I think I'll actually put that in. Look at the scorched girl. It's grasping onto that charred matchstick like that's its only hope. So now, abnormality fights usually have gimmicks to them. And for this one, so I could just have to kill these. But since this is just using an evade dice, I don't really have to worry about it. And this probably... Oh no, one stagger. Deal some good damage, though. I don't know what happens when her light maxes out. I'm kind of worried about it now. I've completely forgot. Okay, so I have the burn status effect. So as you can see, based on how many stacks you have, you take that much damage at the end of a turn and then it rounds down. I really want the stagger on this one. Oh wow. I low rolled. Okay. Oh, well that's what happens. And she gets her light. So I'm pretty much dead here. Oh, I guess almost. Could go for a kill here. It might. I think that's the best choice. Hopefully these won. Oh wow. That's unfortunate.
can't play anything. And now I'm dead. Okay, I didn't have enough damage cards in this deck. Luckily, you don't lose anything. I don't need this. Or this. I should get... Wall up pretty good. This would be really good too. I'll take those. Let's see. I wanted one cost instead of this. Maybe a zero. Actually, no, zero doesn't matter because I don't have extra dice. Okay, I think this is fine. I'm really low rolling right now. This is the RNG aspect of the game. I guess I could have checked their resistances. So they're mostly weak to blunt attacks. Alright, so that shouldn't kill me. Shouldn't stagger me either. Yep. Snare of strength. Strength increases the power of your offensive dice. I'm getting some... Bad rolls here. Oh my gosh. This is crazy. I mean, I guess I can go more into the blunt attacks. Dude, I've never had this much trouble. Like, this is actually kind of crazy to me. At least with abnormality battles, you don't have... You don't have to worry about losing anything. For receptions, you can lose your books. And I would have to kill this thing, but I think I'm going to get hit by her attack next turn. Okay, 
there's one down. Yeah, all you have to do for this fight is just kill both of these. That was a little embarrassing. So, have the books helped? Yep, I'm sorting them all somehow. It seems to be working, thankfully. I really like her voice actor. Phew, that's good to hear. By the way, I think I remember Angela saying something along the lines of earning a fleshy body the last time we met. Were you like not human before? It was like a replacement body, a change that could never be reverted. So you had a brain transplant surgery, but somehow managed to go back to your old human body here? It's actually pretty impressive. Thanks to the library's powers, I'm guessing. Yeah, I think so. You can't let yourself be held back by common sense in the library, huh? I take it that you don't really like having your body back? You didn't seem too happy back then. Oh no, I actually do like it. It's just that this isn't exactly how I wanted things to go down. What did you do in the past then? Yeah, I wonder. What was I in the past, really? I wouldn't believe it, but... This is actually my third try at life. This library and its librarians have a lot of history behind them. All of it covered in Lobotomy Corporation. Third try? Can you come back from the grave or something? It's the accumulated memories from my two previous bodies that were carried over, to be precise. My past selves. I never really thought about it this way before. Difficult problem you're facing there. How about your present self? I'm an irresponsible person who let down everyone's efforts. And an idiot who tried to reach for something out of my means and ended up causing trouble, I suppose. Whoa, whoa, hold your horses. Let's not get too dark here. Let's just calm down for a moment. Take a deep breath. And let it out. In. And out. Relax now? Yeah, it really helped. Thanks, Roland. I should know better than anyone that it's pointless to get upset over things I can't do anything about. I gotta start with the things I can take care of first. Alright, I'll try hard with my work too. Let's take our time with the problem of past selves. Let's see. Use abnormality pages on librarians in battle. So since we can't use, or we can't level up uh, Roland's floor very easily now, we'll go ahead and equip Malchus' floor and use her. Let's see. I think Harry's page is better. Yeah. Though, honestly, I kind of want to go back and burn more of Yoon's book to get that Commandeering card. Because it's so good. Oh, I can't see its stats. I guess, what is Moe's passive? 25% chance on an, a successful attack to look paralyzed. It's actually not too bad, though. 
Oh, that's what all of theirs are. So these actually do have better stats, so I'll go ahead and use those. And we got the equipment. What else do I want? Struggle is pretty good. Probably kind of change her cards back a little. Right, I think that's fine. And continue on with the story. And I don't have any of those books. So to earn more, we go back and beat these guys up again. Ah, the evade dice failed. Oh my gosh, that high rolled. Okay, so I want to stop that attack. Actually, go ahead and gain some strength. And yeah, whenever you get a successful evade, it increases your stagger bar back. I think I've said that before, but it is a very important mechanic. I love the combat in this game. He has two string. Got Yoon's office, that battle page or battle symbol for Malka. Now we can continue on. My whole body's still aching from our last job. It's lasting longer than I thought. Still, yesterday was wild, wasn't it? Yep, the new weapon you got from the workshop was a real killer, that's for sure. You don't say, you got way too excited with it and things spiraled out of control. We had to kill 20 more people than planned thanks to you. Since it was a mistake on our part, we couldn't even get paid for the extra kills. Come on, don't be such a killjoy. You're the one who went on the biggest rampage in the end. Maka's muscles are all sore because he had to try hard to calm you down. Well, I said I'm sorry about it. 
No need to sweat it. I owe you guys a few things too. I hate to admit it, but Tayan has a point. We all should try to cool down our temper a little. As long as we're working as fixers, it's not good to raise more trouble than necessary. Former members of a killer syndicate now registered to an office and doing fixer work. Life really is full of surprises, isn't it? This office is a weird one, too. Can't believe people like us are accepted. Remember what the boss said, there are so many offices and fixers these days, so standing out from the others is the best way to survive in this industry. Our outfits are also quite radical compared to what other offices have. That's why it's filled with maniacs like us. All we gotta do is kill the targets in the most gruesome way possible and hang their bodies out in the open. No wonder everyone's excited to join. Oh my gosh. These guys are actually psychopaths. It's no different from what we've always been doing. At first, I thought it was crazy that an office would do this kind of work. But I guess threatening targets and sending them a warning makes enough sense. It seems to be working well, too. Yeah, I really like this picture. <laughs> They're just chilling. So we've only been getting requests from no-name syndicates and poor folk. This office has a long way to go. It does feel more like a pack of rats than a proper office. Got a message from the boss. He says we should drop by to get new work. Even rascals like those can join offices these days, huh? Well, market's a red ocean. Everyone wants to be a fixer. And that doesn't count as raking yourself over the coals because... Listen, I may not look like it, but I used to be hot stuff, you know? But then things happened and I fell to rock bottom. So what did you do for a living? I did all kinds of stuff, really. Doing things within my ability. Hmm, is that so? I mean, you didn't get to do any proper work then. Whoa. Really did teleport in the blink of an eye. That's one of those singularities? Lots of surprises these days. Greetings, dear guests. Oh. Hi there. She attacked her. What the? It's pretty damn sturdy. How much did you spend on that bod? There's no need to needlessly exhaust yourself, dear guest. You need to rampage with all you have soon enough. I don't like your soft tone. You're not human, are you? Oh, look at her face now. I guess she really isn't. Get another surprise. So rare to meet a sapient being that isn't human in this city. I know, right? I might get a ton of cash out of this. Maybe you find your book in this place. But yeah, and in this pre-battle scene, you can actually alter your deck based on what you think might work best. Looks like these guys are really offensive. Oh, yeah, two axe. They're going a little more defensive or beating their offense is probably the best course here. Go for the kill, why not? Now, yeah, for these guys, do I really like how this guy looks? I mean, obviously, the 
sides are pretty cool. And this Rampage card could be pretty bad. Overpower is pretty brutal too, 5 to 6 on the first dice. Spin this off. I think I should be good though. I'm gonna crush you all, so get ready. Why don't you just hand over the goods before we mess you up real bad? He sounds like a mafia boss. Sorry, my body's still feeling sore. A shame I can't fight in my best condition. <laughs> He's not even playing a card. So we'll just take all the free one sided attacks on him. We'll get some gut harvesting going. So we do kind of want to like get their emotion levels up, so killing him right away isn't really the best option for me. Although maybe it was, she just took 10 stagger damage, oh my gosh. I think I want to take this attack since this character has protect on him so they take less damage. And if I use defensive dice that's even more less damage to take. I just have to hope that Malkith wins this clash. And I have two extra strength and one stack of ember. So I'm clashing against a 3-5. So this will be a 4 to 5 instead. That's pretty good odds. These fucks are strong, damn it. I thought I could make it through this. Rampage. Let's see, you think I can dodge all of them? And actually here. That'll kill even if Malkith doesn't. Oh, or it'll just go first. That's fine. There's Hook Office down. Great work as always. I could learn more about the offices thanks to these guests. I, uh, don't get too bothered by what they said about you, alright? Are you trying to console me? Maybe, maybe not. I don't really care if you're actually human or not, you see. That's refreshing to hear. It's been quite a while since I heard such words of comfort from even one person, too. Well, we're in the age of humanity, after all. <laughs> Are they? I mean, this city sounds awful. Age of humanity? What does that mean, exactly? That's certainly me too hard now. I don't know all the details either. At some point, intelligent or sapient beings that weren't human were actively driven out of the city into the outskirts. Oh, so that's that's what he meant by humanity. He meant actual humans. Not too sure why it took place, but the Artificial Intelligence Ethics Amendment was introduced as part of that movement. It was already possible to create machines capable of feeling emotions and desires, actually. Those that are pretty much human, in other words. I guess that was the problem. 
Thanks to the AI ethics amendment, no machines could ever be made to resemble humans, including replacement bodies. So, there seems to have been a few exceptions. So as they said, I'm no human, I'm a machine, an artificial being. To be precise, I was designed using a human as a template. Only a fraction of her brain was used in my creation. So it's not even a human brain resting in a robotic body? Not at all. I'm purely a machine. What about that fraction of human brain you mentioned? It's only an electronic copy of the map of her brain. My body is entirely composed of mechanical components. I had a feeling. And it looks like you've been living under a rock your whole life, seeing how you're oblivious to the workings of the world. You gotta be extra careful then, especially if you're planning to leave here someday. You're a sapient android with emotions and desires? Your existence is most likely a complete violation of the AI ethics amendment. The head's scarily good at spotting anomalies like you. Alright, oh, in case you don't know, the head is basically a bunch of shady creeps that rule over the entire city. Though, we probably won't ever get to face them. Anyways, this whole library is at a huge risk in the first place. The librarians over here also seem like they're humans, but not really human at the same time. It's just as you say. I was designed to feel emotions, and I spent what felt like an eternity on a stage repeatedly performing a play that never seemed to end. When I thought it was finally over, it turns out it never really ended. I gotta say, whoever created you must have really been something else too. I don't know what motivated them, but breaking the rules designated by the head itself takes more than just guts. No one can escape the head's enforcement. It did all eventually die. But the library will be safe. It has to be safe. It's like a birdcage. No one is free to enter, and no one is free to leave. Again with that dreamy speech you despise so much. What do you even mean by that? I'll leave this place one day, take revenge on all things that made me into what I am, and earn true freedom. I don't care too much either way. That's that, and this is this. Let's see, this guy is Yasad from Floor 2, Patron Librarian of Technological Sciences. Dang, he's so cool. Hey there, name's Roland, Angela's servant. I'm Yasad, the patron librarian of the Floor of Technological Sciences. Is it just me, or is this a cold and piercing stare I'm sensing? Feels kinda different from Angela's, I gotta say. Oh, what's he gonna do? Uh, what now? Don't tell me. Are you one of those types that resort to violence when someone talks crap? No, he's just adjusting his tie. Your necktie was loose. Oh, thanks. Guess you're a nice fellow after all. Tell me, why do you comply with Angela's orders so meekly? Well, mostly because I have no choice but to help her. Now that I think about it, Alcath didn't seem too fond of Angela either. Is it a trend to dislike her or something? It's obvious that we wouldn't approve of her. Angela. She utterly crushed our hopes at the very last moment. Sounds complicated. Are you working for her as a librarian then? It was part of the deal. A deal, huh? I guess that deal is also why most of the floors of the library are locked off and the librarians there are asleep. Boy, I might not a fan of convoluted stories, especially if it involves sentimental stuff. 
Oh, he's gonna hate this. Anyway, both you and I are obligated to help Angela now, aren't we? That is true. Let's give her a best shot then. Put her there. What is the meaning of this? Handshake, duh. Ever tried it before? You know the... I look forward to working with you, kind. Come on, lighten up a little. We can't avoid it, we might as well enjoy it. I'm supposed to get you books like I do with Malkith, right? Indeed. My role is to collect and sort books about the technological sciences of the city, specifically. Since it's become clear that we are both well aware of our occupations, can they take your leave now? I'm fine. I was about to anyway. Alright, we got another floor. And we're in Urban Myth. They do not have the time to think about the terror at the end of the song before the setting of the sun. Scene 2. Any more reports on the distortion from the Hanna Association or Zwei Section 1? Then, sir, they're all observing the situation for now. They did nominate a number of likely suspects, however. So far, we have two urban plagues, Laundry of Dreams, and Yesterday's Promise, and one urban legend, the Church of Gears. The investigation hasn't been going too well, is it? Oh, and the library, a recently appointed urban myth, is also on the list of possible sources. Huh. so even the higher-ups are clueless, aren't they? Seeing as they're throwing out random guesses now. I'm starting to get used to sorting out books now. Tell me, how are you helping me so submissively? What? Remember when you say that you'll kill me if I don't cooperate? Because I sure do. I can't leave here by myself either. Though, you don't appear to be motivated by fear. I've seen quite a lot of people crawl on the floor stricken with fear and terror. Flashbacks of Lobotomy Corporation. Judging from my past observations, I doubt you're helping me simply because you're afraid of dying. What the hell were you doing in the past? To be honest, I have a few things that I want to know about this place too. Such as? You said you want to get the one perfect book as you gather books about the city, right? I figured I could run into some fun experiences if, if I joined you on that journey. I don't have a whole lot to do out there anyway. I'd go back to being a washed up fixer, scraping at the bottom of the barrel again. There is one thing I've been meaning to figure out more than anything else. I'm hoping I could maybe find an answer here one day if I stick around and help you out. What, what answer? Or what's his question? I have a coincidence of interest, I see. Sure, as much as I exploit you, you're free to make use of me. Try to be careful about it, though. A careless attempt could seriously get you killed. Sheesh, you're being way too vicious with words. That's what made you so sharp. You better not pry into my past any further. I already feel like slowly melting your limbs this time. Oh my gosh. Fine, jeez. Um, I have a question, ma'am. Do you take questions, ma'am? What is it now? Make sure it's an appropriate question. I did warn you already. What's up with the librarians here? They don't really feel like real humans. But they don't seem to be machines or artificial creatures either. Entities called abnormalities and employees, both of which were thoroughly exploited by the facility that once stood upon where we are. They're just like me in that sense. 
Originated from humans, taken advantage of, and abandoned once grown out of use. I don't know what you're doing with them now. It still looks like exploitation. They're broken. They couldn't even sustain a stable form, and their existence was so fragile, they could fade away at any moment. They're barely, they're barely kept together as I bound them to a physical body and a book. All I can do for them now is to find the one book that will free me and the librarians. Going to release the librarians? It's the only way for any of us to leave, you know? Use the same kind of power to reconstruct your body. Huh. Just remember this. As we collect numerous books from our guests, we will eventually reach the one absolute book that contains everything. So I've almost used all the abnormality pages that I need to for her. Still need to get to an urban legend and obtain... I can send general invitations. Okay, so this is fun. So basically, you go in here, you can send any of these, or like any random uh, books, right? And it'll give you just a random invitation. You can see it's not highlighted in red, which means that it's not a, a story mission like all of these. So we'll go ahead and send this. And we get these guys, the Backstreet's Butcher. And they have their own set of pages and essentially theme. We'll go ahead and take these guys on. All I'm seeing is a herd of scaredy little pigs. Don't you wonder what you'll spill if I cut you open with this thing? The blood? All I'm oh yeah, same thing. Alright. Two strength on her. I can do some big damage to this guy. I can intercept that. Okay. Let's see, should I go for the kill here? Yeah, I actually think I will. It's kind of upsetting that I lost the chance to chop you guys up. Soft ones aren't tasty anyhow. That guy died, not saddening though. These guys like, super don't care. Never thought I'd be a victim, or be the victim. Hey, we took out the butchers. Yep, and they give their own books. And none of these books are used for 
uh, story. So we can burn pretty much all of them. This should be fine. Let's see, did I get everyone? Not seeing... Uh, the one that starts with an N. I don't remember her name. Naoki. Okay, we'll burn another one of hers. I still didn't get it. Let's see. I want to check to see if she's used for the next... Nope, just the Book of Tain. So I can go ahead and burn that last one. I just want to make sure I had that key page too. So I want to read through their, their credenza stuff. Hey, we got it. Okay. I also really like her key page. Here we go. A hook office fixer, page one. Back when we were still part of the killer syndicate, we got a client asking us to hunt some crazed syndicate. They were shaking like a drenched rat as they came in. I suppose they were scared of places like this. They asked us to catch the wicked criminals kidnapping people in the parts of the streets they live in. We had one question though. It's nice that they're giving us a job, but why ask a syndicate like ours instead of going to the Zwei or other offices that are better suited for, handing, for handling public safety issues? And they said they did try to request an office at first with the money raised by their neighbors, but then the office asked for a ridiculous sum of money, claiming that there's much preparation they need to take before they can uproot a whole syndicate. Our fellow begged for help, but the office personnel didn't even flinch. Well, money is the only thing that gets fixers moving, so that's understandable. And I think their friend recommended us to them while they were looking for another way. I remember it right. Introduced us as a trustworthy syndicate, so they came all the way to our hideout. Trustworthy syndicate. It's a shame, really. I can still remember the client's head staring daggers at me, hanging from the top of a power pole. The syndicate paid us more cash. What could I do about it? We don't write official contracts or anything, so the highest bidder gets our favor. No use glaring at me like that, pal. We were told by our new client to hang their head and guts out in the streets to make an example of them. Those sick fucks even use some kind of singularity to keep them alive. Poor bastard. Should have requested an office in the first place, somehow. And these guys are brutal. Naoki's page. There's a huge variety of workshops, as diverse as syndicates and fixers are. Weapons need individuality to stand out in this day and age. Old-fashioned swords or guns won't stand a chance against modern weapons loaded with new technology, I bet. From cheap and common gear to bionic equipment like the one Tane's using, to equipment with ridiculous abilities that's almost indistinguishable from magic. Don't get too hyped though. More options means you need to be more cautious about choosing the right one for you. If you had the time and money, you could buy them all and test them out at your leisure, but we have neither, do we? Don't just buy the things others recommended without doing your own research, though. That's one of the stupidest things you could do. It might fit them, but that doesn't necessarily mean you'll have a good time with it. Still confident that you can wield them well? Get real, buddy. Workshop equipment is not your average weaponry, so before you choose your weapon, observe others carefully. See if any workshop products might suit you. Having keen eyes is all part of our skills. 
That's why people choose us in our office out of all the tough fixers out there. It's, it's so much reading. Ooh. It's not entirely impossible for a syndicate member to engage in fixer work or vice versa. It's a pretty common occurrence actually. If you have the skills to back yourself up, multiple organizations will make sweet offers to recruit you. What matters the most here is the relationships you've built. Your fate depends on the things you've done, or karma, in other words. We didn't start out as fixers at the beginning. No. We were in fact part of a homicidal syndicate. Just see how intimidating we look. He has got a Jason mask, basically. We used to be murder for hire in District 23. It was a small syndicate ran by Naoki, I, and a few others, but our influence started to expand bit by bit since the young and talented Tayan joined us. Our current boss was originally the representative of an office we raided. They visited us, visited us once they heard that we shredded their fixers brutally and hung their ragged corpses on the streets like scarecrows. Said they'll need people like us. Thought they were just freaky with weird tastes, but looking back, now I get why they chose us. It's a strategy. Each office does all kinds of sensational stunts to attract the attention of potential clients in this oversaturated market. They told radical events such as, pay for one request, get one for free, or group weapons into different grades and offer a free exchange for one of their most expensive ones. And the global clients fall for it. They don't know how much more that 1 plus 1 deal actually costs, or how it has limitations on the grades of requests you can make. They don't bother looking up to check if the top grade weapons are in fact used ones. Seems our boss didn't want to add lies to this industry that's already full of filthy schemes, but they still had to catch people's eyes somehow. And this is the result. Hire guys like us and proudly advertise it. Fixers from a former killer syndicate will tear things up for you. You can count on us. Hang up a slogan like this, people get hooked up. If that suits their taste, that is. Now for Tan. How's my new weapon? Isn't it sick? Dude, hell yeah it is. Union Co. is the go-to workshop brand for ready-made bionic weapons and equipment. Their prices are pretty reasonable compared to most procedures and workshop weapons too. On top of super performance, you can replace or attach them easily without having to worry about allergies, so it's pretty damn handy, don't you see? Someone who has pretty bad allergies? I like this. Oh, bionic equipment is pretty simple. It's like a weapon you attach to your body. It's not at all scary or dangerous, though it could feel a bit awkward when you use it for the first time. In my case, I accidentally ripped Naoki's clothes while walking by and cut my own cheek when I flailed it out of frustration. But now that I've gotten used to it, I feel as if, I've, as if I have three hands. If you have trouble finding the perfect procedure or weapon for you, try bionic equipment. I guarantee it's good. Well, it looks pretty cool. And these are the Backstreet Butcher ones. District 23 is the street of flavor. Everything is permitted in the pursuit of making delicious dishes. Even dismembering humans, isn't that exciting? Uh. A guest walked into a restaurant for a meal, but then the chef fell in love with them. They had the perfect amount of tenderness and girth. The chef pulled out a knife, and the guest ended up on a plate. They'll become the food you appreciated one day, and others will appreciate what you've become. <laughs> Is that supposed to be like a slogan? It's a common story often told in these streets. Well, if you really become the main character of one of those tales, be honored. That means the chef saw you as excellent meat. Hmm? This is one of the best compliments you can hear in District 23. The more you know. So, that was page one, this is page two. The 
Butchering a human is a lot simpler than butchering other animals. Most of them are smaller than us, which means we can subdue them right away even if they try to resist. Oh, I'm not saying you necessarily have to be tall to be a butcher, so don't be discouraged. Anyway, humans can be a bit noisy, but they're very handy to deal with overall since there's little to worry about compared to other meats. Besides the, uh, the eight chefs, for them, human meat is the one and only ingredient that matches their pursuit. Some buzz about how the process of cooking should be part of the flavor. Can't do that with any other meat, so you better watch it. If you dare wander this part of the town, your destination might end up being a dining table. So District 23 is a really messed up place where cannibalism is kind of encouraged. So I'll call it for this one. That was a lot of reading and my voice is dying. I don't, I don't know how much you can really tell, but I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.